the character of Blade the Vampire Slayer was a pretty obscure character from Marvel Comics. That is, until the Blade film dropped in 1998, played expertly by Wesley Snipes, resulting in a trilogy of R-Red vampire slaying action and turning Blade into a household name. You may already know that the Blade movie franchise is being rebooted, but what you probably didn't know is that Blade has a daughter who's being introduced in the comics for the first time. Dropping February 1st, 2023. Let's talk about her. Welcome back to Comic Power. I'm your host, Comic Killer 72. Welcome to another episode of the Quick Flip where I discuss comic book industry news. And today we're going to talk about Brielle, the daughter of Blade, who co-headlines in the comic called Bloodline, the daughter of Blade number one from Marvel Comics. This is what cover A looks like and it's now available in your local comic book store. If you want more black girl magic in your comics, then you got it right here. Shown here is more variants of the first Bloodline issue. And in this video, we're going to celebrate and applaud this brand new character as we speculate where her role is going to be and where has she been all this time. Because I'm pretty sure that Blade isn't a deadbeat. Why would he not be in his daughter's life? And the Bloodline title is going to be her first full appearance in comics. I am assuming, however, CGC may look at this very differently because she made a small appearance in ASC Judgment Day Free Comic Book Day edition back in May of 2022. In a four page story where she kicks a vampire's butt for messing with her friend. She's not saving the world yet and the stakes aren't that high. It just shows that she's capable of action. This comic book was available for free on Free Comic Day, hence the name, and people that were paying attention that this was the introduction of a new character hoarded these and now they're selling for about $5 right now. And if the character is a hit, which I hope she will be, the question will be, what is considered her first appearance in comic? Will it be the Free Comic Book giveaway from May of 2022, or will it be the Bloodline issue of February of 2023? To make things even more complicated, she also appears in Crypt of Shadows number one from October of 2022. So if you're a collector and or a speculator, you might as well get all three. The Free Comic Book Day, The Crypt of Shadows, and of course, The Bloodline Edition. Are you kicking yourself for not picking up a copy of Ultimate Fallout number four from 2011, the first appearance of Miles Morales? Or for not picking up a copy of Vengeance number one from 2011, the first appearance of America Chavez? Or did you miss out on Invincible Iron Man number seven from 2016, the first appearance of Riri Williams? Well, here's your attempt at redemption at getting in early on a brand new character from Marvel Comics. Here's your chance to get in early, and I'm warning you in advance with this video. But let's answer a couple of questions while we're here. While we now just first hearing about Blade's daughter, the way she's depicted in her first story, it looks like she could be anywhere from 16 to 20 years old. And does the vampire hunter have to worry about social services hunting him down for back child support? Well, we got a couple of hints from the free comic book day edition at the end of that story, where Brielle's mom opens up a shadow box that shows a picture of her with Blade, with a note from him about keeping their child safe with some weapons to protect themselves, just in case. So based on Blade's dangerous lifestyle of slaying vampires and not wanting his enemies to find out that he has a daughter and they'll try to come for her. Then him and the child's mother would mutually agree to separate and let the child be raised as a normal human without the baggage. So no, I don't think that Blade is one of these guys. I'm sure he sent some money over all this time. So what will Brielle's role be in the comics? Because clearly some event's going to happen where she's going to find out that Blade is her biological father. It'll be a big emotional reveal for all the characters involved. And the daughter and the father will have a rocky relationship at first, but then eventually they'll warm up to each other and he'll teach her the family business of hunting down rogue vampires. So think of her as is like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but metaphorically and physically a little more darker. Mr. Miyagi and Danielson, Yoda and Luke, Tony Stark and Peter Parker, Morpheus and Neo. Every new hero needs a good mentor. And now we have Brielle being taught by her father Blade on how to slay vampires. Sounds like fun, sign me up. Let's talk a little bit about the creative team that's bringing you all this goodness. The writer and the co-creator of this is Danny Lore, pictured here. And some of Danny's work includes writing for The Champions and Moon Knight, Doctor Strange, New Mutants, and more to come. But the real star in this to me is the co-creator and artist, which is Karen S. Darbo. She drew the free comic book day story, and she's the artist for cover A for the Bloodline title and the interior artwork as well. Her star is really rising. Here's a cover she did for a Magic the Gathering Universe title, and Something's Killing the Children number 13 variant, also from Boom Studios. You just gotta love her take on Deadpool on issue number two. Here's her take on Spider Gwen. Here's some other art she did at her Instagram. That's her web address for her Instagram, so you you can go check out more yourself. Karen is delivering some top-notch work. And here's some top, top secret information for you. I am involved in the project that I co-created and that I am writing in an original comic book miniseries. And Karen has been commissioned to do artwork for it. It's too early to talk about the details, but I'm not making this up. This is coming later this year. But for now, congratulations to both Danny and Karen for producing this and being the creative team behind Bloodline. Now let's talk about Blade in live action. As I mentioned before, the franchise is being rebooted for a live action movie series again. And if you missed it, there was a big reveal at the 2019 San Diego Comic-Con where we learned that Wesley Snipes will not be reprising his role and it's Maharshala Ali cast as the new Blade. This is a major win. This guy's one of the finest actors in Hollywood today. He's already won the Best Supporting Actor Oscar twice. And as a matter of fact, 
two years in a row with Moonlight and Green Book. If you didn't see those films, you may recognize him as Cottonmouth, a ruthless villain from the Luke Cage Netflix series. His character is dead, and the Defenders universe was only loosely tied to the MCU in the first place. So there's no conflicts of him playing a different character in Marvel. And no disrespect to Wesley Snipes, but he's 60 years old at the time I made this video, and Mr. Ali is only 48 years old, so he's 12 years younger. Although it would have been interesting to see Wesley reprise his role, it's kind of hard to keep a superhero body in your 60s. So just to recap, Blake's daughter Brielle is being introduced in a new comic coming out February 1st, 2023. Her first published appearance is in Free Comic Book Day edition AXC Judgment Day from May of 2022 and she co-headlines Bloodline Daughter of Blade number one. Danny Laura is the co-creator and writer of Brielle and Kieran S. Darbo is the co-creator and artist on this. At the time I made this, it's unknown what CGC will consider what is the first appearance of this character. So get Bloodline, Crypt the Shadows, and the Free Comic Book Day edition. The Blade live action movie franchise is being rebooted with Maharsha Ali playing the lead character and is currently scheduled for a September 2024 release. I don't expect for Brielle to show up in live action that quickly. She needs some more character development in the comics but hey you never know. And while you're here be sure to see one of my previous videos where I made the claim that Wesley Snipes as Blade made it possible for the MCU to become a reality. For some reason this claim has turned out to be controversial but I stand by that statement. Until next time this is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye.